As we end today's show, where we began the week in Puerto Rico, doctors say the island's health system remains crippled two weeks after Hurricane Maria hit the island, leaving more than 90 percent of Puerto Rico without electricity and half of its residents without drinking water. Well, that's at least according to statistics published by FEMA on Wednesday. But on Thursday, FEMA removed data from its website about access to drinking water and electricity in Puerto Rico. Well, Democracy Now!'s Juan Carlos Davila is on the ground in Puerto Rico. And this week, he managed to make it to the island of Vieques to speak with residents of the area that the U.S. Navy used as a bombing range for decades. Since the 40s, the Navy used nearly three-quarters of the island for bombing practice, war games, dumping old munitions and napalm. The bombing stopped after a campaign of nonviolent civil disobedience. Among those who got arrested was, oh, the current uh, congressman, Luis Gutierrez. He got arrested twice, and Vieques protesting it being used as a bombing target. The, but the island now continues to suffer. The Navy says it'll take until 2025 to remove all the environmental damage left by more than 60 years of target practice. When Carlos filed this report from Vieques in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Like most residents of Puerto Rico, the people of Vieques have been struggling with shortages of water, food and medicine since Hurricane Maria made landfall. We visited the island on Wednesday without knowing what we can find. Telephones, cell phones, and internet service is not functioning in Vieques, and the only way in and out of the island is either by boat or plane. We began our visit by speaking to community leader Robert Rabin. Vieques is a, a particular place with particular problems. The U.S. military presence on Vieques for over half a century uh, made Vieques, put Vieques in a very vulnerable situation today, for instance. I mean, that problem of poverty, the uh, over 72 percent of Vieques community lives below the poverty line. Uh, and, and we, you know, some studies indicate that the Navy presence here for over half a century meant the loss of over $100 million a year in possible income for Vieques if it had been able to develop a normal economy. And this is compared to the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, uh, the Navy owes the people of Vieques, the federal government owes the people of Vieques, uh, you know, a, a complete reconstruction of this community, not just because of Hurricane Maria, but, you know, in light of this hurricane, you know, in the, uh, in the aftermath of this hurricane, the federal government of the United States owes at least to Vieques to make sure every single family here is, is, is healthy, fine, has a a good solid house and that there's economic development happening here on the island, without a doubt. As we drove around Vieques, we witnessed dozens of houses completely destroyed. Unconfirmed estimates are that hundreds of houses are uninhabitable. During the afternoon, we went to the shelter Dale la Mano a Puerto Rico in the neighborhood of Las Marias, where some residents told their stories to us. This is Edwin Acosta. Mi casa es de concreto. I have a concrete house, but it had a wooden roof. Although it was secured, everything was gone. We lost everything, furniture, everything that was inside the house. I was surprised. I thank God because these people welcomed us here, and they take good care of us. But I miss being in my house, really. Any help I can get to return to my house would be the most important thing right now. My name is Heidi Juliet Torres Rivera. When the disaster arrived, I was surprised because I've never experienced anything like this. Many houses were lost. Many families right now have no home. My house doesn't have a roof at this moment. The beds are wet. Everything was lost. My sisters lost their houses. The families that lost everything, that don't have food and clothes, they lost everything, and it's very hard. Another concern some Viequenses have after Hurricane Maria is how the contamination from the U.S. Navy might have spread, worsening the already severe health problems that the residents of the island face. Again, community leader 
Robert Rabin. The hurricane moved in with a gigantic tidal wave sweeping directly over the bombing range. You know, many of us who are cancer uh, uh, patients, right, and I, I include myself, we're certainly concerned that this is going to bring more toxics into our immediate environment uh, and, and as well as creating serious danger for people who are in the water, particularly fishermen, uh, other people who are in boats, or just people who go into the water. Fishermen of Vieques said that Hurricane Maria caused an unprecedented rise in tides. Carlos Prieto Ventura went to look for his fishing boat inland, about a mile away from where it was originally anchored. We took the boat to secure it at the bay. It is a very enclosed bay. This vessel had a 300-pound anchor with another anchor that was 30 feet long with a two-inch thick rope. Nevertheless, it is here, almost a mile away from the place where it was anchored. It passed over mangroves, eight feet tall, and arrived on firm land here, next to an area of thorn trees. It was dragged by what I understand was the hurricane tide and winds. And just as it was dragged, the storm could also have dragged any contaminant elements that our island could have. I think that the bombs, because of their aerodynamic form, are difficult to move. But without a doubt, the contamination from them, the material that was exposed at the moment of the hurricane tide, could have reached miles and miles away from where it was originally located. We all know, we Viequenses, that in any place of our island we can find bombs, toxic waste from their practice, scrap metal, etc., among other things they've not told us. Anything like that, which could have been around, only God knows where they can be now. That is, let's say, like a box of surprises. Now we really don't know where they could be. Special thanks to Democracy Now!'s Juan Carlos Davila for that report from Vieques, Puerto Rico, with help from Edwin Velasquez. And that does it for our show. Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez will be speaking tonight in Berkeley, California, at 7.30 p.m. at Pegasus Books downtown. Uh, next week, he'll be speaking um, at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. That's next Thursday. Um, and on Friday night and Saturday, we'll both be speaking at the State University of New York in Albany. You can check our website for details. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, Sharina Nadura, Amel Ahmed, and Nat Needham. Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, and Paul Huckabee are engineers. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Gran, David Prude, Ariel Boone, Vesta Godars, Carl Markser, and to our camera crew, John Randolph, Kieran Meadows, Anna Ozbeck, Matt Ely, and Kaya Cirilla. To see all of our Puerto Rico coverage this week and last and the week before, go to democracynow.org, as well as our coverage on issues related to gun control and on climate change. From Houston to Florida, uh, the issue of climate change, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh as well. DemocracyNow.org is the website to go to, as well as Facebook and Instagram and beyond. I'm Amy Goodman. This is Democracy Now! Thanks for joining us.